Wan Yu Wong is going to take us on a ride uh, through a foundation model for linking spatial transcriptomics with histology. So uh, he's at the uh, cutting edge of AGI, and he's going to tell us what he's doing uh, to link uh, the very basic work that we're doing in RNA sequencing uh, to the histological images that the pathologists are getting, and ultimately, like to get this transferred to the clinical imaging so that you can mesh all of these uh, data sets and really understand from an image, from a clinical image, uh, what cells are composing that particular structure that you're looking at uh, and on your echo or your MR, your CT scan. Uh, so we're getting there. Guan Yu Wang is getting there with his story program. Guan Yu, I re we recruited him from uh, Harvard. We're very happy to have him here. Uh, he's uh, really good. He's the tide that's raising the the boats, all the boats in our uh, Department of Cardiovascular Sciences, and uh, now he'd like to apply that knowledge to uh, to translation, clinical translation. Right, Guani? Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Cook, for the introduction. Uh, it is my great honor to give a talk in this conference uh, to show our recent uh, algorithm to develop in the new AI foundation model to link the histopathology image with a spatial transcriptal. Uh, actually, for the for a long time, uh, when I'm a student, so we study transcriptal, uh, epigenetic, and the metabolic mix. So we try to understand the mechanism for the, for disease and how we can um, treat a patient. Maybe reverse the uh, at least restore the senescence or reverse the uh, uh, heart failure from the fiber, fibroblast cell to endothelial cell, regenerate the heart. But it is very difficult for us because the data type is very different. And uh, we need to use different algorithm statistics to deal with different kind of data and mining into the data. But recently, I think it is not a big problem for us because of the new uh, kind of AI technology, which is a foundation model, uh, especially the multi-modality foundation model. So after uh, this kind of new model was developed, my lab started to look into it and found it, it is very, very useful for us. It uh, especially help us to understand the image, natural language, and the transcriptome. So uh, today we will t uh, I will talk about two things. The first one is to give you an intro uh, introduction for what is multimodality learning and uh, what is our work in the multimodality uh, learning. So actually, uh, in our field, uh, medicine field, our data type is very, very diverse. We have different type of data. For example, we have natural language data. We have imaging data. And we also have the clinic record, time series data, and we, of course we also have the sequencing data, like the genetic background, genomic background, and epigenetic regulation for different patients. So if we can integrate all this kind of data together and convert it to a translational study, maybe we can develop the personal, personalized medicine and give different patients different treatment, different drug, and take care of each of them fastly because of the AI and the computational power. So because I'm a data scientist, so if we look into the data, so what kind of data we have? Actually, we have so many different types of data. So here is several examples of that. So in the uh, middle of the loop, we have some clinical image, for example, the HE standing image, MRI image, CT image, echo image, different kind of image. And as a, a, a basic research, we also have sequencing data, we have protein data, we have cyto data, we have MR, uh, protein image data, and we can also have the genetic variation and also the natural language, how the expertise describe about that patient. So all this kind of data should be uh, treated differently. But now we, we have the multi-modality learning. So for each of the data, we, we will train a, a single modality AI model 
and then bridge them together using the cross-modality learning mechanism. So actually, here is a very simple, uh, not simple, interesting example released by OpenAI uh, company, uh, which is a algorithm named Sora. So they can generate the video based on a description of natural language. For example, based on the description of the uh, on the top, so they want to generate a, 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 a boat in a coffee co coffee cup. So this kind of data should never be in their training data set. Uh, so I, I don't think there is any video looks like this. But given this, uh, given a natural language, uh, actually we can generate a video. Actually, I think it's not bad, right? So. Um, this is the power of cross modality. The first modality is uh, natural language. The second modality is the image. And if we have a series of image, so it will become to a video. So actually, this is in the general, so artificial general intelligence field. So if we look into our field, is it still possible to cross different modality? Actually, it is totally possible. You can see there is a lot of uh, deep learning model. So I show you several cases published in Nature Medicine from last year to this year. You can see the first one is a vision language foundation model for the echo image and the natural language. And the second study is focused on the um, HE standing image and the natural language. And the third study is still focused on uh, HE standing image and the natural language. I think a part of the reason is because of training data set for HE standing image and nat natural language is huge. So uh, there are two papers of HE standing image and one paper for echo image. Uh, but actually, uh, there is a, a lot of data for transcriptome and uh, epigenetic, uh, so for the basic research. And uh, we have a new technology, which is spatial transcriptome. Actually, what is spatial transcriptome? Uh, so actually, spatial okay. Actually, spatial transcriptome is we will get the HE standing image first, and then sequence that HE standing image to get the transcriptome. So now we are able to get the paired data for the transcriptome and the HE standing image. So we uh, we start the project that is to cross the omics modality and the image modality. So the idea is, if you have one modality, maybe the information is not enough. But if you have two modality, the information will be better. But if you merge more and more modality together into the, onto the same space, so that space will have very, very rich information that can help us for the personalized medicine. So um, next, I want to show you our new research for the cross-modality learning in biomedical and uh, uh, biology. So here is our data. So what the data looks like. So first we will have the HE standing image, like in the panel A, the top panel. This is a, a, a histopathology HE standing image. And then we will cut this whole slice image into small patches. For every small patches, we will sequence them to get a whole uh, transcriptome. To convert the transcriptome to a natural language, we will first rank the gene based on the expression. So what, which is a highly expressed gene and what is next one and what is next one. So in principle, if your tissue is different, your expressed gene should be different. And now the current not, uh, natural language, especially the large language model like LAMA or ChatGPT are able to recognize the function of the, net, uh, of the genes only based on the gene name because this kind of uh, large language model was trained on huge data set, including medical literature. So in their model, they already have the information for every gene. So first, we will uh, convert the transcriptome to a natural language, a sentence of gene, express gene, and then we will try to train an image encoder and train a text encoder separately. And then train a, uh, using the contractive learning to train a cross-modality 
AI model to link them together and make them into the same space. So in that space, our AI recognize the image and transcript them as the, as the same sense. On that space, we will calcu calculate the similarity between an image and a transcriptome. For example, if that transcriptome is a tumor transcriptome, so we will find what is the most similar image for that tumor patient. And if that patient, uh, that transcriptome is a cardiovascular tissue, so we will find the most similar image for cardiovascular tissue. So this is another explanation. So after we get the image, so we will convert the image into a vector and uh, use an image encoder. So, and if we have a la language, we will use another language encoder to convert language into a uh, vector. And then we will, calculate, we will op optimize the right paired image and uh, uh, transcript home to make it similar and uh, minimal the so, uh, unpaired similarity. So here is still, if we want to train this kind of foundation model, so uh, we need a lot of data. So a small data set cannot train uh, this kind of foundation model. So we want to make, uh, first we want to make sure our training data set is huge. So we collect all the, inter uh, all the spatial transcript home in the internet uh, across different tissue, different, uh, can uh, different disease type. For example, we have normal tissue, we have cancer tissue, we have heart failure tissue, we have Alzheimer's tissue. So we put them together to train a general AI model. And here is the results. So uh, in this image, each row is a text, which is a sentence of transcriptal, and each column is an image. So we can see the right pair text and the image has a very high similarity. The unpaired image and the text has a very low similarity. It means our the uh, foundation model really works. We can match the image with a sentence, which is a transcriptal sentence. And then we want to apply it to several different applications. So here is several examples. The first one is uh, what is the zero shot performance for our model? So here is two examples of the slides. The left one is a normal tissue, the right one is a tumor tissue. So uh, we have the HE standing image here, and we also have the transcript home here. If we cluster tissues based on the transcript home, this is what we normally did. We can see the uh, similar color indicated the similar tissue. They are the same tissue. They are the same tissue based on the uh, gene expression pattern. So they are the same tissue. So after, uh, after we have our new model, we can convert this kind of transcript home into a low dimension space. And we can also convert this image into a low dimension space. At the beginning, before the training, we can see uh, in the image, we have no information, different kind of tissue mixed together, and also the transcript home. So the transcript home looks better, but still make a lot of different kind of tissue mixed together. But after training, we can see our tissue can recognize the same image and group them together, you can see. And we also can recognize different, uh, the same transcript home and group them together. Here is another example. Before training, there is no information. After training, we can recognize different kind of tissue only based on image. And we can also recognize uh, the tissue only based on transcript home. Of course, if we merge them together, we will have better performance. So here is another example to test our zero shot performance. So first we can, uh, so first we uh, have several uh, testing data. They, this kind of image are not in our training data set. So we compare this image with uh, our training data set's gene expression. We can see the top ranked tissue queried by us is looks like this. This is not image image similarity. This is image gene expression similarity. And if we use image image similarity, we can also capture very similar tissue. And then after we briefly test the zero shot performance, we want to know whether we can apply it to the clinical aspect. So first we have uh, we collect different type of 
uh, evaluation data. So in the evaluation data, expertise already uh, group different image together. For example, they, they have a, a category named tumor tissue and another category named uh, adipocyte and another category named cardiovascular muscle tissue. In each kind of, uh, in each type of tissue, they have, there is thousands of testing data. And then we, we also add, uh, curate the marker gene for different type of tumor. So we calculate the similarity between the marker gene and the image to, to give every image an annotation. You can see this is our performance. The performance is very high. If we use a bench, uh, uh, open AI clip model as a benchmark, you can see our performance is much better than them. And because there is several different uh, algorithms that can annotate tissue based on human language, for example, this is tissue is a HE standing image of tumor. This is uh, HE standing image of smooth muscle. So we can, so their model can act, uh, accurately annotate the tissue based on the natural language. Our model can annotate the tissue based on their marker gene. So we, we merge them together. We merge these two type of information together. You can see this is the performance of our model. This is their model, language model. This is our transcriptal model. Our is better than that. But if we merge these two models together, the performance further boost. And this, here is another data set. This is lung cancer. Here is another breast cancer. Our model performance best. And here is another cancer data set. The, uh, the triple modality model works better. So it means different kind of uh, different kind of data has different kind of information. If we can uh, integrate them together, we will have better annotation for our tissue. And further, we propose a LACO model. So we think, uh, although every patient has different tissue, so but if we cut a, a, a tissue into very small blocks, actually each of the blocks should not be very, very new it should be existing in some of the patients, but different patients' block can group, on the, can build up a new patient's image. So this is our LACO model. For example, this patient is a heart failure patient. So we didn't train our model using this slice. So we cut this slice into small patches. And you can see, if we use these patches to retrieval in our database, you can see we can find something very similar to these patches. If we use these patches to retrieval in our database, we can also find something very similar. <clears throat> so, uh, and so after we cut the patient patch, uh, cut the patient tissues, we, we will further ask if we pair the tissue image with their RNA seq data from blood. So this is bulk RNA seq data from blood. This is a uh, TCG cancer data, cancer patient data. This is breast cancer. So this is a real patient slice, breast cancer slice. Mm. Uh, pathology annotated here is a tumor. And we also get the uh, RSA data from the same patient. We can see in the tumor region, the image matched very well with the RSA data because the RSA data <laughs> was collected in the blood and most of the RNA released into the blood is a tumor. So we can recognize where is a tumor in this way. And we can also predict the gene expression. This is the same slice I show, in, uh, show you in the LACO model. This is the ground truth. We have the sequencing data. So this is the real sequencing data. This is a prediction using our model from image to gene expression. This is prediction using our model from image to image. We can see our model can really uh, perform a very good, high, high accurate prediction for the gene expression, which means maybe in the future, we don't need to sequence every patient. We just need to get the image. So we can also uh, annotate the tissue image. For example, this is a cancer patient. We can identify where is the cancer, where is the blood tissue. And here is another example. We can retravel. So this is a, another breast cancer patient. We retravel a lot of 
similar image. For example, if we zoom in, this is retrieved image, this is original image. Here is another example. So uh, the whole picture for the, the study, so this is the first uh, pre, uh, proof of the concept. In the future, we, we want to maybe we need to collaborate with other expertise to get the other modality. But in the future, the long-term goal for us is to bridge every kind of different data into the same space. In this same space, it is really informative rich the space, have different kind of information come from different kind of data. So if we really can train the foundation model in the on the future data set, maybe in the future, if you have the MRI image, you you will have the information for the other modality because we have the transfer learning strategy. So if you give us more modality, we will have a better diagnosis or pro prognosis performance for that patient. But even single modality will be good enough for us. So this uh, project was uh, finished by Wiqing Chen. She, uh, she is a uh, PhD student from Will Connell P, uh, PBSB pro, uh, program, and also Peng Zhi Zhang in my lab. He is a research associate. Uh, I, I want to thank all my collaborators and my funding support. Thank you. Thanks, Kanye. We'll have some questions, but uh, while we're taking the questions, let me have the panelists come up uh, for this session. Uh, Francisco, Dr. Valdrabino, and the other panelists come on up while we're uh, taking the questions. Uh, you know, this is, um, I think, I'd love to see the uh, our imagers, Bill, take advantage of this. I mean, because the idea here is that um, by linking these data sets of spatial transcriptomics, the histology, and uh, the clinical images, you can take a look at a clinical image and understand what structure that what, what that structure is composed of, what cells that structure is composed of, what those cells are making. You can do that now with the histology. Okay, Good question. question. Go ahead. That you can do it at that macro yet. Uh, yeah, I think if the training that has uh, is at that, that level, we can do it. So so all, all of them is based on the training that has that. What's the questions? Yeah, yes. Sure. Um, such a fascinating talk, you know, just ignited a lot of thoughts. The question is that on, for example, atherosclerosis imaging, CT, MR, but mostly around CT, of course, we may not have histology data, but what about EBMCs, proteomics, metabolomics, can they be tagged along with some of the radiomic signatures to understand, of course, it may not be as accurate as you're looking at the histology, your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a very good question. Actually, this is a major challenge in the AI field. So uh, I think the current solution for that question is, so uh, for example, if we have many, many different kind of modality, we don't have a pair of data for all the, all the modality, but we will use some of the modality as a natural link. For example, um, the Meta company proposed a image band of algorithm that use the image as a link for natural language, uh, audios, different kind of modality, but the link will be image. So in our field, I think the link should be the language. So because we have too many uh, literature and also uh, we can easily find the literature for different type of data, for example, MRI data or some other image data, we have a lot of description for that data. So we can use language as a link. Yep. Thank you, Guan Yu. Yeah.